Welcome back, friends. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, osteoporosis. Uh, osteoporosis is a condition where the bones become weak. So it's very common. We had talked about falls and how falls in people who have osteoporosis or bone thinning can lead to fractures last week. The symptoms of bone thinning can be loss of height, a stooped posture if one is getting stooped as we age, or fractures of the vertebrae. The causes of bone thinning uh, can be many fold. Biggest one is as we age. Also osteoporosis is more common in women. It's more common in people who are of white origin or Asian origin and certain people who have family history. In other words, parents have uh, bone thinning. We, we are susceptible to that and people who have smaller body frames. As women reach menopause, because of loss of estrogen, that's a big risk factor. In fact, postmenopausal osteoporosis is a separate category in itself. There are certain dietary factors where if one has GI surgery or is consuming low calcium levels, or there are certain groups of patients that have some eating disorders where there is bulimia, where people throw up or uh, uh, induce vomiting. Those are conditions where there's some bone thinning. Other causes include common ones such as some steroid medications, which is very common if somebody uses steroids over a prolonged period of time, it can cause bone thinning. Acid reflux medicines, seizure medicines, and certain cancers and transplants have been associated with bone thinning. There are some medical conditions, and if you have any of these, check with your doctor about bone thinning and checking for osteoporosis. That includes celiac, which we had talked about, which is a sensitivity to gluten, inflammatory bowel disease, kidney disease, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple myeloma, and lastly, certain lifestyle factors such as being sedentary, excess alcohol, or tobacco use have all been associated with osteoporosis. Why is osteoporosis a problem? Because bone thinning can lead to bone fractures, especially of the spine. That's where the most, most of the time, or other areas if you have falls. From a preventative standpoint, here are things you can do. Number one, maintain appropriate body weight. Number two, get enough calcium. The recommended calcium is on this slide. In the daily recommended calcium level, is about 1200 milligrams for women who turn 50 and men who turn 70 and between the ages of 18 to 50 we need about 1000 milligrams of calcium. Good source of calcium include dairy products, leafy vegetables, salmon, soy, fortified cereal and juice. Along with that it's important to get enough vitamin D and the recommendation is for people between the ages of 51 to 70 get 600 international units and then 800 international units per day after the age of 70 either through food or supplements. The other thing we can do to prevent osteoporosis is exercise. The important exercise is weight bearing exercises, in other words push-ups, squats, anything that involves pushing weights or pushing against the wall, that's what helps the bone become active and balance exercises help in preventing falls. So it's not in preventing osteoporosis, but more so in preventing falls. It's common to make the diagnosis through using a DEXA scan. It's a scan which looks at the peripheral bones in the spine and gives us a score. There are two scores in that, a T-score and a Z-score. The treatment for this includes groups of medications called biphosphonates, such as Fosamax, Boniva, etc. There are some monoclonal antibody medicines called denosumab, which is prolia. Hormone supplementation is indicated in some cases. Avista or raloxifen is another group of medications. And lastly, there are these newer groups of medicines, which are teraparatide, which is fortio, abeloparatide, and lastly, evinity, which is romosuzumab. You know, these are mouthful names, but these are drugs. These are groups of drugs that have become available. Things that we can also do is avoid smoking, minimizing alcohol, and preventing falls by doing exercises. So these are broad groups, but the main point is if you have any of these conditions that we have, you have, start talking to your provider about this so that we can continue to walk straighter and to prevent any kind of fall-related fractures, etc. 
Thank you for joining us today. As always, uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you.